In this series of webcasts, we will be outlining some of the key trends which have impacted upon the freight forwarding industry over the past year. I will be drawing from our latest report, Global Freight Forwarding 2012, which contains analysis of these trends as well as market data, forecasts, market shares of the leading freight forwarders and their operational and financial profiles. The first of these webcasts looks at trends in world trade. World trade has been very dynamic over the past decade, with underlying growth being driven until very recently by strong growth of export and import traffic from China and related economies. To some degree, the rates of growth since the end of 2009 have been flattered by an element of bounce back from the severe dip seen in early 2009, but the underlying trend is still evident. Volumes have also been more recently boosted by trade between China and other emerging economies, as supply chains in the region become more integrated and China's rise as a consumer market continues. One of the most important background factors underlying the dynamics of global trade in the past year has been the depressed nature of consumer demand in Western markets. Of course, up to 2008-2009, such demand was the main driving force behind both air and sea volumes, moving product between the new assembly locations in China and the retail markets of the West. These trades have not gone away, however their growth has moderated. Europe has seen falls in import traffic over the past 12 months, as can be seen from the trend line. Imports to European economies had been recovering right through to the beginning of 2011. However, this reached a peak in March 2011 and then proceeded to fall. Volumes were up substantially by 17% as compared to 2010, although the pattern displays a deteriorating trend throughout the year. 2012 year-on-year -year volumes are still below those of 2011. As we can see in the next chart, the US picture is slightly more optimistic. 2012 volumes have surpassed their 2011 highs and appear to have more forward momentum than those in Europe. This would appear to confirm a resumption of economic growth, although it is early in the trend and most recent data is quite weak. China, which represents the other half of the major world trade routes, has also seen a degree of change in terms of exports. The huge leaps in volume seen in previous years have moderated to around single number percentages. There are indications that volumes between China and other emerging markets are filling some of the void left by lower export activity to the Eurozone in particular. But again, this is a recent trend and it is unclear how prolonged this will be. Another characteristic of the underlying freight transport market is the strength of exports out of Western European and North American economies. Whilst German exports have been growing very rapidly at an annualised rate of around 17% through 2011, there have been significant signs of slowing into 2012, with an actual fall in volume in April. You can see the red German trend line diverge markedly from the blue US export trend line in the last two quarters. It appears this downturn is more driven by the state of markets in the Eurozone, with demand from China moderate, but not as strong as before. The US, however, has experienced continued growth in export activity through 2012, roughly comparable to the growth seen in 2011. Over the first quarter of 2012, exports were growing at 8.6% year-on-year. Company results suggest this may be slowing through mid-2012. However, it is worth noting that a high proportion of US trade is with Asia-Pacific and South American economies and so much less affected by the condition of the southern Eurozone economies. In the next webcast, we will turn our attention from macro trade volumes to the fortunes of the sea freight sector. In the meantime, for more information on Global Freight Forwarding 2012, follow this link to the Transport Intelligence website.